Today we are going to make some thin and possibly crispy chocolate cookies, but That's right, there is cayenne pepper in these cookies. Start with one and a half cups flour and three fourths cup of cocoa, one teaspoon of baking soda, a fourth of a teaspoon salt, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and one eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. This will just give it a subtle spicy flavor. Mix these dry ingredients together really well in another bowl, add a stick of butter. This is unsalted butter. Add 3 fourths cup of sugar and mix those together until they're nice and creamy. Now add one egg, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla, and one tablespoon of molasses. Blend them together really well until they're nicely incorporated. Make sure your butter is at room temperature so it mixes easier. And it may look a little curdled, but that's okay, nothing to worry about. Wipe off the sides and add the dry ingredients a little at a time. I got this recipe from simplyrecipes.com and on that website they are called Thin and Crispy Cookies. And I think they become more crispy the longer you cook them. So if you want them a little bit soft, then cook them a little less. The dough is done when it looks sort of like Play-Doh. Scoop it out and roll it into a nice ball, wrap it in plastic wrap, and put it in your refrigerator for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, take it out and roll it into a nice thin sheet. I'm using different kinds of cookie cutters here. This one's from the 60s, I think, and um, they work out okay, but it's better to have a cookie cutter where you can just pop it out easier and it doesn't get stuck in the cookie cutter. These are supposed to look like cupcakes. The thinner you roll them, the quicker they'll cook and the crispier they'll be. I'm cooking these for about 10 minutes in a 350 degree oven. Take the rest of your dough and, oops, and finish off the rest of the cookies. So what's nice about these cookies is they're really versatile. They can be made into little ice cream sandwiches or you can dip them in chocolate or just frost them but they have a really slight cayenne flavor. It's not that noticeable, but it gives it an interesting little hint of something spicy. And I always like making something that has a secret ingredient. I'm going to use these leftover items from Christmas to do some decorating. I can't find my mallet. I'm using a double boiler to melt these chocolates, but you can use any kind of chocolate that you want. Or like I said, you can frost them or just eat them plain. This recipe makes about three dozen cookies, but if you are making smaller cookies, of course, you'll be able to make a lot more. The peppermint on top just adds one more dimension of spice. On top of the cinnamon and the chocolate, and the molasses, and the cayenne pepper. Thanks for watching.